So let's move on to our next keynote, and that is cloud, the state of play, the convergence of cloud, artificial intelligence, and 5G. Delighted to welcome my guest. That is Richard Simon, Chief Technology Officer at T-Systems. Hi there, Richard, how are you? I'm fine, how are you guys doing? How's it been going so far? It's all going very well so far. We've had some lovely feedback, so let's keep that going. Let's keep the pace up. Um, I'm sure you've got a lot to get through, so the virtual floor is yours, sir. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, it's a tremendous pleasure to, to be able to be doing this uh, keynote talk to, uh, to everybody. I hope everybody's been having a good uh, a good session so far. Uh, so yeah, as, um, uh, as it was uh, said, my name is Richard Simon. I work as a Chief Technology Officer for T-Systems International. Uh, T-Systems is part of Deutsche Telekom, the German telco giant. So this particular presentation is going to focus really on um, kind of just looking at some of the key trends that have been happening around cloud, uh, AI, and 5G recently, and kind of how we can maybe potentially see the, the convergence of these and what are some of the uh, kind of key factors causing that. So uh, for those who don't know, I am um, uh, been in the IT industry for over 33 years. Uh, I've worked various different types of roles in the past. So I always like to kind of just do one type of job. So I've done everything from systems engineering to architecture uh, to consulting and now uh, as, a, as a CTO. Uh, worked for a number of uh, prestigious um, uh, uh, system integrators and, and uh, technology vendors, the likes of IBM, uh, SUSE, Worldwide Technology, uh, Consino, etc. Uh, and I'm very much a cloud native and sort of open source advocate. So I like to really kind of uh, promote those technologies, promote um, uh, those sort of communities and be able to uh, do things like conference speaking uh, and also do a little bit of YouTube as well. So I'll um, provide a little bit more detail on that later on. Okay, so let's get cracking. So as we said, we'll kind of focus on the cloud landscape for our agenda. Then we'll move on to kind of AI and where AI sort of come in, what's happening with AI recently, uh, and why kind of the, 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 you know, the interest in the last sort of 10 to 12 months in AI. Uh, and also look at the role of 5G, 5G and how kind of 5G is going to be able to, uh, to offer us what it's already doing and what the potentials are sort of going forward into sort of you know, the, um, the rest of the 2020s and, and into the 2030s. And then we'll draw some conclusions uh, and I'll promise to try and give you some time to do a bit of Q&A towards at the end, so get your questions ready. Okay, so the cloud landscape. Um, so I think there's a, a clear sort of uh, progress happening uh, in the area where uh, you know customers are moving and enterprises are moving to public cloud. Uh, so we're seeing an enormous drop in on-premise solutions. So all the on-prem data centers and so on are being consolidated. Uh, there's a little bit of sort of off-premises happening, so that's kind of uh, being offered as an alternative, but clearly the public cloud is kind of the uh, the main area where everybody's really heading towards. Uh, and, the, and the other interesting thing is that it's actually a multi-cloud environment. It's not just one public cloud, but it's actually multiple clouds uh, that, uh, that enterprises are adopting. Obviously, this brings a huge amount of challenges for IT. I'm not going to go through all the, the list here, but suffice to say, there's a, you know, uh, IT's got this kind of its work cut out for it. Everything from sort of a mobile workforce to digital transformations, how we um, migrate applications into the cloud, uh, and how we do all of that in a sort of in an agile uh, and secure way, uh, and how do we uh, keep costs of cloud down as well. That's really important as well. That's also come up in the last uh, 12 months uh, as an as a important factor. So all of this kind of really transitions as we go from, you know, from cloud into, uh, into the, uh, sorry, from data center into the public cloud. So clearly our class strategy has to be a little bit more clever than just being on the back of an envelope. We have to kind of look at our strategy a little bit more detail. We have to step back, look at the overall picture, uh, draw an operating model, a future operating model or a cloud operating model, uh, and include various aspects that will help us uh, to achieve that strategy. So things like a cloud center of excellence, or a FinOps approach to, to how we do cloud costs, for example. So all of that goes towards our uh, cloud strategy. The other area that we've seen a lot of change in is in um, kind of how you develop applications. So we've kind of gone from the monolithic applications that we had in the data center to uh, more cloud native applications. That's how we ought to be developing applications going forward into the cloud. So clearly DevOps has been there for some time. It's kind of a, a methodology of how we develop applications 
uh, in the cloud that are cloud native. But we've also seen some challenges to DevOps happening as well. Uh, so the rise of things like GitOps, which focuses more around the, the Git uh, as a repository, as a single source of truth, and platform engineering, which kind of gives you the standards uh, for how you should be doing uh, sort of your development work and some of the frameworks and uh, some of the tool sets that are being used in that space. So again, lots of uh, changes there are happening in that DevOps space. It's no longer just kind of a, uh, you know, a focus on DevOps tools uh, and processes, but also how you actually do that with frameworks uh, and, and um, sort of, you know, set, set tool sets as well. Okay, so what's happening in AI? Well, I think one of the questions I really wanted to ask, and I've been kind of asking myself this the last 12 months, is why why AI now? What's been the explosion? Why ChatGPT has happened, you know, sort of in the last 12 months? Why has it, you know, not been something that we've been able to achieve in the past? Clearly, the tools have been around for a long time, so all the kind of open source software and technologies and so on that we've, uh, you know, we've had for uh, AI uh, and ML has been around for a long time. So why chat GPT now? So just looking beyond the headlines and kind of the, the, the scary stats that people have put out, uh, I think it was important to kind of understand where we're coming from, why, you know, is things like chat GPT become sort of popular recently and this kind of la large language models and so on uh, that have been uh, sort of introduced into, uh, you know, into the, uh, uh, into the public. Okay, so the, the main answer really is because of this, um, or at least one of the answers, is this transformer technology, this new model and way of le uh, learning uh, for computers to actually learn uh, how to do AI and how to do uh, machine learning uh, capability. Uh, I won't go through the details of you know of, of the chart, but suffice to say, it's basically given a kind of a breakthrough in terms of how machines can actually learn, pick up on certain keywords using this sort of uh, trans in you know, a transformer model uh, and this sort of attention mechanism, as it's called. Uh, that allows you to basically focus on um, certain keywords and and create. Um, and vectors and key terms for those, uh, or key codes for those, uh, you know, particular words that we want to focus on uh, in things like natural language processing platforms, which then uh, lead on to things like generative AI uh, capabilities. So Transformer, that's the kind of one of the new learning models that's sort of appeared on the scene. It was introduced by Google back in 2017. Um, and that's kind of really been one of the factors driving uh, the uh, sort of the success, the recent success that we've seen uh, in AI. The other one is purely investment. So it's basically uh, the likes of Microsoft investing in open AI. And that investment you know, goes back some time. It's not recent. It was actually done back in 2019. Uh, so although ChatGPT kind of came on the scene, was released late last year uh, in 2022, uh, actually the investment by Microsoft, which is effectively giving OpenAI, the compute capability of Microsoft Azure, that's the, the Microsoft public cloud. Uh, that's been done for some time. That was actually done way back in 2019. So clearly investment uh, has also been one of the factors of why we're seeing kind of the, um, the enormous success of, um, uh, of cloud recently. So that was back in 2019. Microsoft invested $1 billion in, in OpenAI, the company that uh, uh, created uh, ChatGPT. Uh, and obviously, uh, after the, the success and the announcement of that late last year, as we said, um, there's been other leaps kind of in terms of, you know, Microsoft uh, integrating uh, ChatGPT and OpenAI uh, platforms and solutions into, uh, you know, into their cloud uh, platforms as well. Uh, and again, that obviously uh, culminated in a further $10 billion investment by Microsoft and OpenAI earlier this year. So... Um, as we said, the the why now I think question has been has been answered. So we have uh, a technology, the transformer technology, that's kind of associated with that. Um, Open AI having the the vision to kind of produce uh, that kind of la large language model, uh, uh, you know, platform, uh, and then the likes of Microsoft actually investing uh, investing that. Obviously, others have also done the same. The likes of Google and so on, uh, but kind of Microsoft was the probably the first to see that vision. Uh, back in 2019. Okay, so 
what is the role of uh, 5G? So 5G is um, really kind of going through a, you know, it's, it's the, the, the carrier space, the telco space is going through an enormous amount of change. Uh, and two key factors for this is the, the kind of the softwareization, if you like, or the digitization of, um, you know, of the telco services that kind of used to be quite proprietary uh, in, in the in, in sort of working the traditional technologies of telco. Um, and really making that a, a digital platform, making that a virtual platform, basing that around cloud and being able to, to offer those services in a much more innovative way. So that's kind of been the, uh, the change in the sort of the carrier business model. That's what we've really seen. And that's kind of essentially revolutionized how we, you know, how we do things like 5G technology and how we offer that as uh, services, both for consumers and enterprises. So obviously, this means that the competitive landscape going towards 2030 is going to be completely different from what it is maybe what it was yesterday and what it is you know today. Uh, so you'll not just see the, uh, the the telcos competing and probably consolidating in that space, but you'll also see other niche players coming in as well. So maybe software vendors and hyperscalers. So those who actually have public clouds. At the moment, and offering, you know, continuing to offer their traditional cloud services, their hosting services, but also offering um, sort of more uh, telco services uh, as part of their uh, portfolio. Uh, so you'll see a sort of a diversification, really, um, uh, of you know of how telco, so traditional telco services are being offered. So you'll still have those telco players still there, uh, the giants like you know the Deutsche Telekom, uh, but also you'll have other players competing uh, in the telco space as well. So I'm not gonna go through this uh, chart, it's a bit of an eye chart, but uh, the, the idea is that you basically have a number of triggers of how kind of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the telco space, the 5G space is, is really uh, sort of changing. Uh, and that kind of has an enormous sort of explosive effect going on to uh, how the, the market has actually responded by digitizing everything uh, to looking at the various sort of markets and, and, and verticals there. So things like manufacturing, uh, energy, agriculture, et cetera. Uh, and looking at kind of what technologies can actually address those. So everything really from you know, 5G to upcoming things like 6G to edge computing, IoT, um, business intelligence, uh, big data uh, and uh, high performance computing and various other technologies, including AI of obviously coming in to uh, augment all of that as well. Uh, so clearly kind of these mega trends will, you know, will lead to uh, many more changes in the telco space. And we'll see that that will actually uh, kind of be not just morphing, but also innovating as well in terms of the, the types of services that will be on offer uh, in the telco space. Okay, so what can we conclude from all of this? We've seen kind of a, um, a quick sort of run through of cloud. We've kind of looked at sort of AI and what's happening with AI and why AI has sort of become popular uh, and some of the changes uh, that we're kind of witnessing in the telco uh, space uh, around 5G and so on. So what is the convergence point uh, for all of this technology? Well, the convergence point is really cloud. It's really the digitization of everything. It's taking those kind of traditional, um, you know, communication and networking uh, hardware that we used to have, for example, in telco, and actually digitizing the services that and the capabilities that they're able to offer, the technology that they're able to offer. So taking that. Um, uh, kind of capability that the hardware has and actually, uh, you know, digitizing and putting it into software so it can be more easily uh, programmable, flexible, uh, and allows us to innovate as we, as we go forward. So that's really essentially the kind of the unifying force, the single unifying force behind uh, all of the uh, capabilities that we've seen uh, in cloud itself uh, with open source software and things like that. Uh, with AI, as we said recently, and also uh, things like uh, the, the telco space. Uh, and as my dear colleague uh, and friend uh, Omer says, um, really the, the technologies uh, that this kind of brings is, you know, is unparalleled in terms of its scale scalability, resilience, and as well as agility. So organizations can now adopt this technology much more easily. Vendors in all of these spaces 
uh, can actually offer more innovative solutions as well uh, and be able to harness really all of this uh, technology that we have, including things like 5G's, you know, low latency and high bandwidth capabilities. So together, cloud native, uh, as we would call it, uh, AI and 5G technologies are really setting the stage for uh, this kind of innovation, which is, you know, unprecedented. Uh, we've not seen this before happening in, uh, in the uh, IT and technology industries. Okay, so uh, just a few points to finish up on. So multi-cloud is very much the way forward, as we said. We've seen the majority of enterprises are uh, adopting that. So not just one cloud, but multiple clouds. Uh, cloud in general, uh, as, a, as a general purpose, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, platform uh, and future solution does pose enormous challenges for, for organizations. So as I said, we need to have a strategy around how you go to cloud, how you migrate your applications to cloud, and how you migrate your data to the cloud as well, and take advantage of things like AI and 5G and so on uh, as, as emerging technologies. AI is definitely here to stay. Uh, there is a cost, though. Uh, we, we have to be enormously um, aware of you know, things like security, privacy, and the computing resources as well. So it's going to draw on all of that, it's going to challenge and uh, put pressure in all of those areas and other areas as well. So we have to be kind of responsible as to how we adopt AI you know, going forward. And then um, 5G, 5G kind of, you know, again, enormous potential uh, in, you know, in various verticals, um, but again, still some way to go in terms of how it's kind of regulated uh, how, how you know um, uh, standards can be uh, adopted uh, using 5G, and how we can actually harness uh, 5G and beyond uh, going forward in uh, in our enterprises. And as we said, this is a combinatory thing. It's a combination of all these technologies. And you know, cloud is kind of bringing all of these things together, uh, and and now you know, allowing enormous flexibility and innovation to happen. You know, to happen in all of these spaces. Okay, so that's my presentation. I hope you've found that useful. I appreciate it's been kind of a, a skim through. If you have some questions, I'm more than happy to, to take those. Just one final reminder, as I said earlier, uh, I do have a YouTube channel uh, called The Cloud Therapist. So if you're interested in hearing more about all these things, uh, jump onto YouTube and have a look at that. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. I do various things like uh, interviews and debates and demos and things like that, and talk about all different types of uh, cloud topics as well. Thank you very much. I hope that's been useful. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, Richard, that, uh, that plug was both shameless and subtle. I liked it. <laughs> nice plug at the end for the YouTube channel. Okay, a couple of questions if, if I could. Picking up on what you were saying about the convergence point, do you feel the unprecedented amount of progress and development has become because of that convergence point between all these different types of technologies? Yeah, definitely. I think the, I mean, my opinion is that the, this convergence, I think, is, is first of all unavoidable, but also the, you know, the, the enormous leaps that we've made in, as I said, digitizing those sort of functionality that we had in hardware before in proprietary hardware. So, so things like, um, you know, sort of, um, you know, telco, uh, uh, sort of switches and routers and things like that that were kind of very much, you know, focused on uh, sort of a hardware solution. All of those have been digitized. All of those have been virtualized. So things like network function virtualization, for example, which is a, uh, a you know a, a huge part of kind of how you you know virtualize those uh, types of uh, functionality, uh, you know, happened back in sort of 2017, 2018. Uh, so, you know, we've been able to actually offer that type of thing uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a cloud environment, you know, way back then. So uh, that has certainly helped that and, and developing those things, moving those, uh, that functionality into software uh, has given us that uh, innovative uh, edge. And one final question, if I can, because I don't want to dig into too much detail, because we are welcoming you back uh, fairly shortly after the networking yes. break for the panel discussion. So I don't, I don't want to exhaust you too quickly. But one word you use, which is something I'm hearing a lot of cloud and tech leaders use increasingly when it comes to AI, and that's augmentation. It really feels like a word that's being used more and looking at AI from a slightly different 
direction. Do you, do you feel that augmentation of existing capabilities is really the value and the direction that AI is taking us? Um, it is. And I, I mean, there's enormous, I think, um, you know, advantages of how kind of you know, can augment AI into, um, you know, into existing uh, sort of technologies and platforms and you know, solutions out there. I mean, I, I give you a very quick example. Um, the, the way that you monitor applications in, in a cloud environment is called observability. So this kind of comes from what we used to call sort of systems management and service management back in back in the sort of the data center. And one of the things that emerged in the last sort of few years is the um, that because the, there's so much resources in cloud, we you know the, your sort of poor average tech support person and cloud ops person is not really able to you know take uh, you know be able to um, uh, you know look at all of that. So one of the things that uh, has emerged is called AI ops. So that's actually applying AI in the in the space of operations. So we can actually detect problems, you know, with our cloud environments much more quickly, much more easily, and also to be able to actually address those issues as well. So with the aid of AI, you know, cloud ops teams and SREs are able to actually, uh, you know, cope with uh, problems and failures and issues in their cloud environment in a much more clever way. And that is a very good way of breaking it down. Well, I'll let you have a break now, Richard, because we are welcoming you back fairly shortly for our next panel discussion. Thank you so much for your time on, on that keynote, and we'll be uh, welcoming you back very soon. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.